So here's the book I wrote, UFOs Over Colorado. Uh, I dug real deep into various UFO organizations, contacted a bunch of UFO researchers, uh, got some original cases of my own. Uh, and uh, let's just start digging into what I think are the top 20 uh, Colorado cases. And, but the case I chose for number two is the San Luis Valley UFO hotspot. Uh, every state that I've investigated has an area that is particularly prone to UFO sightings. Uh, for example, Arizona, it's Sedona. For California, it's the Santa Monica Mountains, uh, the Santa Catalina Channel. And for Colorado, it appears to be the San Luis Valley. We really owe a lot of uh, kudos to Christopher O'Brien for investigating and writing about uh, the many sightings which has occurred here. Uh, he moved into the San Luis Valley in July of 1989. He was a musician and construction worker, uh, but started, started having sightings himself and went to a party where he heard people talking about UFOs, found out this was a hot spot, and sort of got dragged into the UFO field involuntarily <laughs> around the same time I did. Uh, and uh, really began investigating and soon uncovered many, many encounters involving a wide variety of objects, anomalous lights, disc-shaped craft, triangles, boomerangs, fleets of objects, a bunch of landings, and of course, abductions, uh, people being chased by UFOs in their cars, uh, car lift cases were UFOs swoop down and lift cars up into the sky, much like that case in Longmont I uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, animal mutilation cases. Uh, so yeah, there's an enormous amount of activity in this particular area. It stretches back uh, over 100 years. In fact, there are Native American oral traditions about UFO sightings in this area and ant people within those uh, sand dunes, the great sand dunes. So for some reason, this area is very prone to UFO sightings. And uh, of course, it's become very well publicized because of that. Um, one of the really interesting things I find about the uh, San Luis Valley, I went there myself, by the way, with Stephen Greer on one of his UFO CE5 uh, workshops, uh, and at which time, uh, he did call down UFOs. Uh, so I have seen a number of UFOs with Stephen Greer. He came to here in LA and called down UFOs as well. So yeah, there's something about uh, this area which is very conducive to UFO sightings. One of my favorite stories coming out of this is the UFO watchtower, uh, which was founded by Judy Messaline. She kept having people camping on her land, uh, which is near Hooper, you know, in the south San Luis Valley, and she became frustrated by it and uh, finally decided, to, if you can't beat them, join them. And she asked the city if she could build a UFO watchtower. And she got approval and she built what I believe to be one of the first UFO watchtowers in the United States. And it was immediately very popular, um, attracting dozens of visitors and uh, continues to be very popular. And she has cataloged many hundreds of sightings from her UFO watchtower and had sightings almost immediately after building this tower. I haven't been there yet, but it's definitely on my bucket list. Uh, and has talked. she's talked to many, many people who've not only had sightings, but abductions as well. So I think it's an important step. We should have more UFO watchtowers all across the US and especially in these UFO hotspots. But she recorded sightings dozens in 2001, throughout 2002, throughout 2003. As far as I know, it is still opened. And uh, yeah, it's definitely something, I think if you wanna see a UFO, that would be a good place to go. Uh, they've had people actually call down UFOs using you know, powerful flashlights uh, on this watchtower. So that's why I gave it the number two spot. The San Luis Valley is a really good place to go if you want to see UFOs.